Just great. Appreciate you coming by and joining yeah, us. Yeah, good to be here. Yeah, it's not busy at all. Is yeah, it? Kind of, well, actually, today's a slow day. I, shoot, I talked to my father the other day. He said, you know, National Signing Day's changed a little bit, hasn't it? You yeah, know, it really 10, has. 10, 15 years ago, everybody in the country was locked into this day to see exactly where everybody was going and where they weren't going. So yeah. uh, because of the early signing date, which um, – which I like. I, I think it benefits us. But yeah, today's kind of a quiet day and yeah. pretty predictable and um, and a good day for us. Is, is that um, is it fair to say that's a successful signing day when it is predictable? Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, the unpredictable days, uh, for the most part, uh, don't benefit you. Although yeah. they benefit some. You know, there's yeah. there's some guys that it goes both ways. It though. can, it can. Um, and if you're an elite program, I, I remember they said at Ohio State. Back in the day, they said Urban Meyer was really opposed to the early signing date because he loved to evaluate and recruit late guys committed to other schools. Mm -hmm. And he didn't want an early signing. He wanted to go all the way to the end and, and chase the guys that he really wanted at that time. So uh, it benefits us. Uh, we can evaluate our guys, get them on our campus, and, uh, and as they develop to become good players, uh, they're signed with us, so we got them, and we're yeah. happy to have them. And so receivers, you know, that's one thing I think uh, I'm curious to hear. Sometimes for some fans that may not know one way or the other, like they assume, okay, he, you're a receivers coach, you recruit receivers. But it doesn't always work that way. You recruit an area, you recruit a position, a little bit of everything. How a little bit of everything. We all have an area and we recruit our area and, and we'll double up on a player in our area that plays another position. Okay. Uh, but I will recruit all receivers uh, that I will coach. So okay. uh, wherever they are, and I will go see them in the spring, uh, whatever area they're in. Uh, but I do have an area, and, and I'll recruit different players in my area um, as well as receivers. So in evaluating high school receivers, now I know this is sort of a broad question. But what do you look for? Like what are you – what makes a guy – the light bulb comes on yeah. and says we got to have him. Well, re receiver is one of the – Probably the only position I can think of that height, weight, shape, size, speed. I've signed guys 5'8 to 6'4, to uh, guys that ran really fast and not real fast, guys that weighed 160 pounds to guys that weighed 230 pounds. Yeah. Um, so it's a diverse collection. And anytime, and, and I think this is one of the benefits you get in college, you know, we can, we can reach on different type of talents. Uh, you know, we have four receiver positions, and they're all a little bit different, and they range a little bit in size, speed, quickness. Uh, but we can reach on, on who might fit those spots the best. So mm. uh, we try to evaluate these guys, try to get around them, try to get around what kind of mindset they have, try to talk to their coaches, their families. You know, there's so many variables into you know, toughness and just love to play the game that, that are really important at about every position. Um, but there's a lot of good qualities on tape that, that kind of separate a guy that's better and other guys but still at the end of the day you, you want to try to find guys that love playing the game that are tough that like winning football games sure and you mentioned you know the difference in recruiting the calendar is so much different okay so the the early signing day I guess you know kind of going back to that for all positions it it does it sort of take the intensity away maybe from the late January, those last couple of weeks of January, as opposed to what it used to be? Here's what, it adds intensity to December, though. Um, and that's where our so intense – 100%. That, that is our intense month. Absolutely, it, it takes away from January uh, if you have a good class in, in December, which we signed. But it also makes those – that last month, those last weeks, those last official visit weekends, those – those are critical to, to who your class is going to be. Sure. Steve Spurrier, Jr., receivers coach, Mississippi State, now passing game coordinator, that title uh, added this week. What does that, you know, what does that – mean to you and to your responsibilities to, you know, passing game coordinator. It's pretty obvious what it is, but in terms of what you were uh, handling. Uh, probably does not change a lot of what I've done and what I will do, uh, but, it's, but it's a compliment. It's a compliment from, from Coach Leach. It says here's a guy that's, that's qualified to run my offense one day, mm -hmm. and that's, that's what I appreciate. You know, if you're a receiver coach, there's a lot of receiver coaches out there, but uh, to be a passing game coordinator means the head coach, the offense coordinator, has recognized you as a guy that can run this offense. Sure. And uh, so going forward, that's, uh, that does, that means a lot to me. You're in the booth during ball games, And see, normally I would know that in the radio booth, we're right next to you yeah. guys. But, you know, some staffs like to pull the shades and then others will leave it open. We can see you over yeah. there, you know. And I, I know that I, I thought you'd been upstairs, you know, during the games and – you know, from a, from a viewing the game and evaluating it during the course of the game, you, you got to see the whole field. And I guess if you're on the side, there are advantages to being on the sideline, but you can see the whole field and what's going a little better if you're up in that booth, I guess. You can. And, and I talked to Leach 
and I'm probably the one guy that talks to him and he said, you know, we'll, we'll figure things out, but I'm kind of his eyes up there. Okay. Um, I've been on the field three or four years of my career, but I've mostly been in the box and th there's benefits both ways. Uh, to me as a coordinator, I, I think you need to be on the field just to communicate with your players and, and kind of look them in the eyes. Uh, but being in the box is, and it's calm and it's organized yeah. and, and, and what you see and, and the, the information you can communicate to the field is, is, is a little different. So, um, yeah, my wife's always getting on me. She's like, now you need to be on the field. That's, you know, that's where all the important people are. <laughs> I'm like, let me explain what I do here. And, and yeah. that's, this is as long as I'm with Leach, that's probably where I'm going to be, but, sure. um, sure. but it's good. It works well. And, uh, we, we see things similarly and, and the things he asked and the information I give him, I think is what he wants. So it's, it's been good. So at your position, coaching those outside receivers and then working so closely with that inside receiver group as well. Um, and there's a change over there. Coach Nickel moving West and uh, coach Hollingshead is moving up to an on-field position. Um, and we got that news this week. What is the benefit to a guy who, you know, you know him, Drew's been around, it's not someone coming in. He's basically just moving up into an on-field role. What's the advantage of having already coached together? Well, it's a big advantage, and that's why he got the job. And, and Coach Clear is, uh, Coach Leach is very clear on, on who he wants that guy to be and what he wants him to know and understand and, and, and know about our offense. And our offense is unique in what we do and how we coach it. Uh, and, and Drew's been around it for, for several years, and, and he knows how those guys are coached. And he knows what – those guys are expected to do so that that was that was really important to who he is that's you know I coached with coach Leach my tie to him is I was a receiver coach in 1999 at Oklahoma and and when he was at Washington State and had an opening and called me um and he wanted a guy that he kind of knew and a guy that kind of understood his offense a little bit but I'll never forget when I got there and this is 2017 I guess before spring football he put on the tape of the 1998 Kentucky spring install okay he said here's what we're gonna do here's what we're gonna do Tim practice Couch. all the things just how we run practice um and and i was like that's exactly the way it was the next year 1999 in oklahoma i'm like i, I re remember what we're doing so wow. no he has he has a certain way he does things and he's done them that way forever and and his ability to just continue to repeat what he knows what he believes in uh has really made him successful it's really something to think about too uh, you know i would imagine that's unique for a coach in 2017 that's using stuff from 100%. You'll never, you won't meet another guy that can do it like that. That can do that. No. Well, and I guess you said it, it sort of speaks to um, Drew Hollingshead, it's just kind of the latest example of a coach that cut his teeth under Leach as an off field guy yep. and then worked his way up into that on field position. Yep. And Dave Nichols the same way, his years at Texas Tech with him. And you know, being a GA and doing all the work we did, what he did with him for so many years and to be hired by him. And that's sure. how he got the job. Sure. Steve Spurrier Jr. on your radio right now. He coaches receivers here at Mississippi State. Um, Makai Polk, looking forward, it's going to be in an absence of Makai Polk, and he was a big-time playmaker for you this past year. Um, what, what do you think went into his decision to go ahead and, and try it out and dip a toe in the NFL? Not a very smart one. Uh, I will say that he, he should have come back and all the things that he can improve on and become a better player, um, to me, he should have returned. Uh, but he and his family, uh, he, he, he was ready to, to take his shot. And, we, and I wished him well. And, you know, as much as I tried to recruit him back and a piece of me just said, make sure you're educated on what's the best decision for you. And when he and his family said, this is what we're going to do, I said, hey, I, I wish you nothing but the best. Uh, I appreciate what you did here. You had a record-setting year at Mississippi State. Uh, we haven't had a receiver draft in so many years, so hopefully you're a guy that can get that shot. Um, and thank you for your service. You know, he was uh, a few years out at Cal. I think he had 25 receptions over so many years. And um, he was an outstanding young man, outstanding player, did a lot of great things for us. And, and we'll wish him the best. And uh, the, the day he announced it, I, I think I put something out and said, next man up. Mm -hmm. So whoever that guy is, we're going to get him ready to play. And uh, there's 105 receptions out there to be taken by somebody. So who, um, 
you know, it's sort of putting you on the spot, asking you to put someone else on the spot, but who are the guys that are candidates to step into that role? Well, you know, at this time last year, we weren't sure. Uh, mm-hmm. So Caleb Duckings uh, is the next guy to step into that spot right here. And, and Caleb, to me, is – and I kind of feel bad for him a little bit because he's a good player, but he was stuck behind Makai, who was a really good player. And uh, Caleb will get his chance. And, you know, we brought in a couple uh, transfer portal guys, and we don't know a lot about those guys right now, but they'll be given the chance. And, you know, anytime you're in a an air raid – you know, two receiver coaches, four receiver positions, 15 receivers in those two rooms. Uh, eight of them are going to get ready to play. And, uh, you know, we work hard in winter conditioning, work hard in, in spring football. And, you know, four guys will come out of that um, out of that group that are better than the rest. Sure. Brandon Langwa, sports information director here, um, he was giving me the information because uh, I couldn't think of all the names. But four star receivers that are on campus now, uh, here at State, Tulu Griffin, Marquez Dortch, who signed yep. in December, Antonio Harmon, who, you know, you see him walk in and you're like, okay, there's a guy. And Xavier Thomas, who signed today, Jameer Calvin, and then two transfers, Jordan Mosley from Northwestern and Justin Robinson from Georgia. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys yep. at the receiver position are four-star recruits. And, you know, he and I were just – I don't think that's ever happened before here, <laughs> to be honest with you. And it makes sense. Guys want to catch the football, but the, the talent is there, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely it is. And uh, I, I spoke to a, a receiver from Michigan today. I think it's legal for me to say that, um, who is a four-star kid committed to another school. And I asked him, what do you know about Mississippi State? What do you know about – and he said, well, I know Mike Leach is your head coach. I know you run the air raid, and I know you throw it a lot. And here's a kid in Michigan. So uh, as a receiver coach, we can reach receivers. Um, as a receiver in high school, th- they know who we are and, and how we play and what we run, and they want to be a part of an offense that, that just as you watch it provides receivers an opportunity to just get the ball in their hands a lot. Um, and I've always said as a coach in this offense and talking to players, listen, to, to be a receiver in this offense is outstanding. If we play well, we will win the game. If we don't play well, we're going to lose the game. Mm-hmm. And that, that is a, a testament to how good this group needs to be and how hard we work and train and get ready to play. Um, but, yeah, we have a lot of talented young men here and uh, going into next year, and even Xavion Thomas committed today, four-star. Um, and he, he reminds me of Debo Samuels. You know, he's kind of thick in the lower body and, and can do a lot of those things. So, you know, we'll have a lot of guys that come and compete and uh, we'll put the ball in their hands and see how they play, and we'll put them on the field and we'll let them play the game. And uh, somebody will come out a little better than the others. And, Hopefully they'll catch 100 balls next year. Well, and, and somebody will. We know that. And I guess knowing that somebody will sort of ups the ante when the competition actually begins in a few weeks in spring practice, doesn't it? It does. Um, but honestly, the, the some of the best teams we had at Washington State, we had a lot of really good receivers. And I had two guys that played the Z position. One had 64 receptions. One had 72. So, so to me, that's almost better than having one guy. Now, if you have one elite guy, which is what we had last year, he got all the balls. But I would love to have two guys that did. Yeah. And um, I'm trying to think at, at Washington State, we had 10 players with over 20 receptions one year. And that's, that, wow. that is remarkable. So now we're looking forward to spring and letting them compete and see where we are. Well, we're looking forward to it also. I really appreciate you stopping by. Yes, sir. By. Always good to be here. Yeah, great to talk to you. That's Coach Steve Spurrier, Jr. He is the uh, receivers coach, now passing game coordinator here at Mississippi State.